Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today we're going to take a look at a £1,000 Xmas PC that you can actually build. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we'll be taking a look at a £1,000 in the UK PC build that you can actually build right now, where there is items in stock and... Yes, it will be ready in time for Christmas. So if you're planning on doing a build for Christmas, around about the £1,000 mark, then this is a guide on some of the parts that you can use and can get hold of relatively easily. Now this is going to be centred around two kind of key components, which I've got here on the desk already. And actually I will be doing this build myself, uh, coming up very shortly on the channel, so if you want to see how that goes, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the chime button and all that kind of usual YouTube stuff. But anyway, the processor we're going to be using in this particular build is going to be the Ryzen 5 3600 which pretty much is the best bang for buck on the market at the moment. Now it is a little bit more expensive than it has been previously, but still compared with other processors that are sort of available, this one definitely does fit the bill. And for gaming purposes, which this PC is really intended for, this is pretty much the best you can get for the money. You can obviously, if you want to, increase it with a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9, and obviously the price will increase correspondingly. But this processor combined with the rest of the components we're gonna be using, is going to be absolutely perfect for 1080p and 1440p gaming at moderate resolutions. So that's the processor. Graphics card wise, we've gone with something which is um, slightly unusual, but not entirely unusual. Now, obviously, there are plenty of new graphics cards on the market at the moment from both AMD and NVIDIA, but trying to get hold of them is the equivalent of trying to get unicorn tiers, not particularly easily. So we've gone with the XFX, the Radeon 5700 XT triple dissipation model, which luckily is in stock in most locations at the moment. Now I'm using Amazon as my primary goal here, but you can get it from other UK sellers such as CCL, Overclockers UK, etc, etc. Now obviously for those of you in overseas markets, you will have to check a little bit closer, but we're going to use PC Part Picker, so that's going to be nice and easy for you to do. So let's get straight into it. So on PC Part Picker, this is my save parts list. You can actually come along with us with this. There is a link in the video description, which you can check out now, and you can look at this list and obviously modify it for your own particular needs. So first of all, as you can see, there's our thousand pound Xmas PC build. And first of all, we've got the processor, again, Ryzen 5 3600. It's a 3.6 gigahertz, six core processor with 12 threads, and will turbo up to, well, realistically 4.2, 4.3, is expected but these will overclock a little bit as well so you can push them a little bit further also it comes with a stock cooler as well so you don't necessarily need to buy an additional cooler but in this particular build because we want it to be a little bit special and it is a christmas present and obviously we want to keep it as quiet as possible we have opted for an additional cooler now obviously if you remove the cooler from the pricing you will drop it a little bit maybe about 20 pounds or so which obviously you can use to uh, help us out on patreon if you see the need so that's our processor again great for gaming great for pretty much most tasks streaming all that kind of stuff six cores 12 threads is absolutely fine obviously with xbox and playstation now using more and more threads and more and more cores and obviously games being cross developed between the two you may find that after a little while that you may want to go for eight cores but again this is the beauty of the am4 platform you can just buy another processor and with a little bit of jiggery pokery with a bit of bios you can generally upgrade very very easily so next up is going to be our cpu cooler now for this particular one i've gone with the uh the gamax or gamax the GTE V2. Now this is a 120 mil tower cooler, as you can see, and at the moment from Scan, this is 24 pounds, which actually is a pretty decent price for this kind of thing. For me, it looks really nice. It's got that blacked out fan, got the blacked out column as well, with all the heat sinks and the tower, etc. I think this looks really good. And again, for 25 pounds, I think it's fantastic value for money. And it's certainly a big increase in performance over the stock included cooler. So it will overclock a little bit better, although realistically, most of the Ryzen 3000 series aren't particularly well known for being overclockers. So this is definitely my choice of cooler, nice and easy to install. We do have spring clips on the side, which is uh, never a favorite of mine, but certainly will get the job done. Obviously, if you don't want to use that cooler, you don't have to, you can use the included one and save yourself the money. So next up is our motherboard. Now the motherboard, we've gone with the MSI B550-A Pro, which is a ATX motherboard. We are gonna be using an ATX case in this build. And this is actually a really good motherboard. It's very much trades blows with the Tomahawk board, which again is probably the best one on the market for this particular price segment. But for £130, £133, that kind of price, you do get a lot of bang for your buck. You get decent VRMs, you get decent heat sinks, you get a M.2 cooler, four RAM slots, and all the usual bells and whistles. Also, you obviously do get a plethora of RGB and addressable RGB ports. 
so there's going to be no issues there and also you get a load of fan header ports as well so if you want to deck the place out with tons and tons of fans that is very very easy to do without the need for a separate splitter ram wise we've gone with uh, pretty much a safe bet on here this is the corsair vengeance lpx 16 gig which generally we do tend to put in these build guides although obviously you can swap this out for anything you want to so if you want to go for silicon power v color team delta whatever the case may be you can go for pretty much anything you want obviously this at the moment is pretty much the best price that i've seen around and for what is at the moment round about just under 70 pounds for 16 gigs of ram of a quality brand I think is excellent value for money. Now we do have Black Friday sales going on at the moment and also into Black Friday. So do look out for those sales and price drops. Although this kind of Corsair Vengeance does tend to fluctuate a little bit, but not a great deal. It's generally always at a very decent price. If you want to check out the prices and previous price history, you can always use the Camel 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 app or add-on for your browser, which you can check out from the link up here. And there you can make sure that you're making the best buying decision. The RAM is DDR4-3600, which uh, fits in perfectly with the Infinity Fabric at 1800 MHz, and also is CAS Latency 18, which isn't the greatest, it would be nice to have a CL16 kit, but you generally do pay considerably more for a CL16 kit, and the advantages of that are kind of minimal and open to argument. Next up is our storage, now I've opted for NVMe storage on this to go into the M.2 slot, and we've gone with the Western Digital Blue, which is the SN550, one terabyte drive. This is a really good all-round drive and at the moment here in the UK is a very good price. Again, we do have the Black Friday thing going on or Black Friday month as it seems to be at the moment. So obviously do shop around, but you can check Camel 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 and check PC Part Picker to see what prices are best. These do fluctuate quite rapidly as well. There's also notable options from TC Sunbow. If you want to go for an SSD or an NVMe drive, those often do crop up at very good prices. But again, they're going to be limited to availability and obviously when those special offers crop up. If you want to find out about extra special offers that do crop up from time to time, we do have a Discord chat group, and also in there is a bargain section, which quite often they'll be posted on there, so you can be amongst the first to find out about these latest deals. The drive itself is only a PCI Express version 3, although we do have PCI Express expansion 4 on our motherboard, so we could use Gen 4 support, but realistically, again, for gaming purposes, it isn't really that much of a difference. And again, depending on pricing, local pricing, etc., the drive is absolutely fine. And we can pick one up from CCL here in the UK with sh free shipping and handling for about £86, which again, for one terabyte of NVMe storage, I think is pretty decent value for money. Although, in fairness, we have seen the TC Sunbow drives come in at around about £65, which is a pretty decent saving, but obviously you will have to wait and do your shopping history and do your shopping homework to find out when they're available, if they ever become available again. So next up is going to be the star of the show. Now this is the XFX, the 5700XT Triple Dissipation. Now this is actually one of those uh, underrated cards in my personal opinion. I've got one in my own personal rig and I find it to be very good. It gets some really decent benchmarks and really does get the job done. Now for some of you out there who are Nvidia fanboys and prefer the RTX series, then obviously you can swap this out for maybe a 2060 KO, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to stretch up this budget to a 2070 or 2070 super so this for me is actually pretty much the sweet spot so you get the performance you do lack some features that are baked into nvidia cards such as the ability to stream with obs better due to the built-in hardware etc but that doesn't mean you can't stream with this it just means that the nvidia cards will possibly be more suited so potentially you could swap this out for something like the evga 2060 ko which uh, we reviewed which you can check out up here that one is also very, very limited availability. So again, this is designed to be products that are actually available that you can buy and you can build with. This card in particular I've chosen over some of the twin fan models purely because the extra cooling facilities and we're gonna be using a pretty decent big size case so it's gonna fit in very easily. I do find that the noise profile with triple fan cards generally tends to be better than the twin fan cards purely for the reason that there's an extra fan doing the hard work to keep those temperatures under control. This card is somewhere in the region of about 220 to 230 watts of usage, so it does need a little bit of cooling help and assistance, and that extra third fan certainly does the job. The card itself, as you can see from the pictures, is a very neutral tones, and is pretty much all in satin matte black. There's no RGB on the card, so you don't have to worry about configuring it with RGB with the motherboard and the case, etc., which uh, we'll take a look at next. So the case we're looking at is the Lian Li 215. Now, for those of you that haven't seen this case before, there are similar versions of it available on the market. It's actually a really nice looking case and it's loosely based around a kind of a wholesaler's design, also used by the Game Axe company in the F15, both the M version and the glass fronted version. 
So if you can't find the Dian Lee 215 available, because again, this one does sell out pretty quickly, and there is only a few places in the UK now with stock, they are waiting for them to come in, but it has turned out to be extremely popular. So you can choose between this one and the Gamax F15M, which are very similar. Again, if you wanna see what that case looks like, then you can check it out from the review up here. But for me, I really do like the look of this case. Those two massive fans up front with the RGB really do give it a distinctive look, very similar to the Cooler Master H500 series. And for cooling purposes, again, we've got some relatively hot running things like the processor and the graphics card. So every little bit of airflow we can get in the case with this mesh design is gonna be helpful. The 200 mil fans do spin at around about 800 RPM at the top end. So they're not gonna be particularly noisy and generally, even when they are on full load, all you hear really is the kind of the whoosh of air going through the system. In normal use, they're absolutely silent as is the graphics card and also will be the processor if you take advantage of that additional cooler. So overall, the system is gonna be virtually silent under most loads. Going back to the case, some of the nicer features of this one over the Game Max F15, we do have uh, a few more tweaks in this. For me, the fan controller is a little bit better of a setup. You don't have the additional remote control and all that kind of stuff for controlling the RGB, so it is done through the motherboard itself. So do make sure if you are getting this case, get a motherboard which actually does have an addressable RGB header on it. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's not gonna work. Nice features as well in this, you've got rubber grommets as well around all the cable routing points, which is a really nice option, which is something which was definitely missing from the GameX F15. And overall, I think it just looks a really nice case. One of the extra features, which for me is a plus, is the fact that the PSU basement is completely sealed off on the side, so you don't have that kind of cutout where you can see what power supply is in there. I find this just looks a little bit tidier, but again, that is entirely a personal preference. Next up is our power supply. Now, the power supply may be one which is going to be a bone of contention with some people. Now, I've gone with the Colink Enclave 600 watt 80 plus modular. It's a gold certified power supply and it is fully modular, so it does tick a lot of boxes in that regard. A lot of people will be thinking, oh, it's Colink, never heard of them before, what am I expecting? But there have been some reviews out and it does seem to do very, very well. It's not one of your kind of EVGAs or that kind of thing, so you do pay a little bit less, but you do get a very similar response and very similar performance. You only get a three-year warranty of it, which is a slight downside, but at the moment, a gold-rated power supply of 600 watts, which is only 63.99, I think is personally fantastic value for money. Again, obviously, if, in your particular build, you want to go for something a little bit more uprated or a particular brand name, you can always swap that out for something else. Again, power supplies are tremendously, uh, well, they're basically out of stock in most places, especially the higher end ones. Gold rated power supplies around the 600 watt are super popular. They're very, very limited, but it seems that the Colink ones do seem to be readily available in most locations. So that's always a plus. And again, this comes down to the fact that this is a Xmas build PC. So you wanna get all the bits in time so you can build it up and get it ready for Christmas. The last thing you wanna be doing is to be placing pre-orders and hoping or praying that your parts turn up before Christmas and Johnny doesn't get upset. So overall, in the end, our total spend is £1,006, 31p. Obviously, this will fluctuate a little bit from now and when you actually watch this video as PC Part Picker as a, almost a live update on pricing. So this may fluctuate slightly. But for me personally, I think this actually represents Great value for money, very, very good entry level to gaming for 1080p and 1440p. Most games you'll find will run at the high settings on this or ultra settings, anywhere between kind of 75 to 100 frames per second. Again, you can change your settings, etc., to get things either higher or lower. Things like Far Cry New Dawn will quite happily run on this setup at 100 frames per second at ultra at 1440p. I know that because I've done it myself and I've used it. It does work very, very well. Things like Rocket League, etc., that's gonna be absolutely no problem. Lots of the other popular games, Fortnite, etc., is gonna run absolutely great. Although Fortnite does tend to favor Nvidia cards, so do bear that into the equation if Fortnite is your thing. And obviously, that goes with pretty much all games. If there is a specific game, say for instance, like Control or something, which does favor Nvidia cards, and you're basing it around a particular game, then obviously do take those things into consideration. There is actually quite a big difference in some of these titles. Also as well, if RTX is your thing, obviously this does not have ray tracing support. So again, you may need to look at Nvidia cards, but essentially it comes down to what you want to use the PC for, what games you're playing, what features you need. But overall, I think this actually represents great value for money. And again, it's all in stock. What more could you ask for? So let me know your comments in the comment section down below. We'd be interested to know what your thoughts are, anything you'd change, what would you keep? Any other bargains you found, please do let us know. 
Again, this is one of those things where parts do fluctuate, prices fluctuate, so and they will be different from region to region because of the dollar exchange rate, etc., etc. So this may go up, it may go down. Hopefully it'll go down, but you never know. Anyway, I've rabbit on for far too long, so let us know what you think in the comment section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll see you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.